helping people, changing lives. Well, the history of Civitan goes back to our founder, um, Dr. Shropshire, and he was meeting with a group of businessmen who, who really wanted to um, foster a feeling of citizenship, that citizenship is very important. We are a service organization. Civitan started out, uh, it's a derivative from the Latin word civitas, good citizenship. Tom and Mary McNulty had a child by the name of Tommy with severe Down syndrome. At that time, they were advised to put Tommy into an institution, and they had a different plan for Tommy. I personally had an opportunity to get to, get to know Tom and Mary McNulty. Tom really committed himself after his son Tommy was born, and Tommy had Down syndrome. Tommy loved to fly, and so did Mary. And they traveled extensively. They went to literally all of the international conventions. Tommy went with them, and many, many people in Civitan all across the United States had an opportunity to meet Tommy and to uh, talk to him and see what could be accomplished with love and understanding. He was the pioneer to bring developmentally disabled people out of the shadows into the mainstream. Their plan was to have a mainstream in the schools and they started raising money to fund, uh, support teachers, peoples through scholarships for educational purposes. In the 1950s, we changed our focus to serving people with developmental disabilities. The Baltimore Civitan Club, which is the club that Tom McNulty, Mary, and Tommy Jr. were members of. Uh, the founder of Civitan, Dr. Shropshire, was also a member of the Civitan Club. Now, it's interesting to note that the Chesapeake District has a foundation. That foundation was started in approximately 1953 by members of the Baltimore Civitan Club. That foundation has grown today, and one of their philosophies was to, when they left this money, this foundation, to the Chesapeake District for their care, they wanted this money to go to an area that it would help the most people, the most uh, uh, Tommies of the world. As time passed, that foundation grew. But Tom, being a parent and having an only child, wondered what would happen to Tommy over uh, the time when he and Mary were not around. Tom had set up a foundation called the Tommy McNulty Foundation. It was a private foundation, and another Civitan that many of you know Whitfield Mallory and I spent much of our time with Tom, convincing him that he shouldn't have a private foundation, he should have a Civitan Foundation. One of the reasons that we support Civitan International Research Center is because we feel we're fulfilling that wish of the McNulty's to where we're helping the most people with those funds. And there's directors from each of the 29 Civitan clubs that make the decisions. They vote 
on where the money will go each year. And that's how we, that's how we support um, the research and the wishes of the McNulty family. Tom, uh, over the years, continually uh, worked to expand the understanding and the care of the individuals uh, that meant so much to him. He, he never backed off. Uh, he never slowed down. We were the only major service club at that time to allow women to be full members. And we won by a very small majority, but thank God we did win. When Dr. Shropshire was a member of Baltimore and he needed to go to different meetings, Tom McNulty had a plane and he would fly Dr. Shropshire to the different events, clubs, districts that he needed to go uh, and meet with the people. Well, people ask Tom, why, why do you do that? What, what's the point? And he said, well, when I get Courtney in the airplane and we take off and we're flying to the meeting, I have him for a couple of hours and I can tell him all about how I feel about the field of retardation and how the intellectual and developmental disabilities of people are handled, treated, cared for, and he can't go anyplace. I mean, he's a couple thousand feet up in the air, so he really has to listen to me. And Tom must have told that story a hundred times. I would say the Chesapeake District and the leadership in the Chesapeake District um, before I became governor and after I was out as governor and went into the international, they did so much through the Special Olympics. Special Olympics became a major, major activity of Civitan, not only in the district, beginning with uh, Eunice Kennedy Shriver. During the last 40 years that I've been involved with Civitan, I've seen things, uh, the development of the Kennedy Center, the initial stages were in fact initiated by the McNulty's. Uh, Civitan was involved with Special Olympics and that has involved into a worldwide event at this point. Naturally, we've seen the start of the Civitan International Research Center and all that it has done for the benefit of all people, not just the citizens that have developmental disabilities. To me, the key message of Civitan and the main thing that we should push when we're working with people who aren't aware of what Civitan does is the Civitan International Research Center. The work they do there is just totally amazing, uh, both in the clinic and in the lab. Um, I want to start out by making unequivocally clear to everyone here how important the support of the Chesapeake District and the foundation is to the research center. They've always had a special place in our heart for the research center, so just about any time they need anything, they can come to us and we'll figure out somehow to get it to them. You pretty much have provided about 50% of the support that the Research Center has had in the last eight years or so. In addition to that, as you know, um, you've provided us with an instrument, the functional neuroimaging magnet, as we call it, that was instrumental in getting incredible talent, such as Dr. Lati, who's to the Research Center. So on behalf of the Center of Scientists, I thank you for that, and I thank you for the vision that you've had in helping us do what we need to do. I really think that uh, the Research Center is the thing that I, I, I beat my chest on when I go around. But Civitan in general, like I say, teaches you to be a better citizen and be more aware of your surroundings. The Foundation supports 29 Civitan clubs within the Chesapeake District. And we give away a lot of money 
every year, just about a half a million dollars. But that's through 29 Civitan clubs within our Chesapeake district. Something I'd like people to know about Civitan, it can be as much work or as little work as you would like it to be. I think one of the outstanding things about Civitan really is not only the projects, but it's the friendships that you make and being able to see the caring that people have for other people once they really understand uh, what it is all about. But if you're a young person and you want to give something back to the community, this is a good choice. At this particular time, I'm 93 years young, and I'm the only past international president from the Chesapeake District who's still alive and kicking, kicking hard at times. The topic had to do with volunteerism. Who would volunteer and how would it affect the individual? Not only the individual, but the community and all of those different aspects of it. But as you volunteer, you're doing something for someone else. And believe it or not, when you volunteer for an organization as, such as Civitan, we tend to live longer, live better lives, do more good for the community and the world. But it's such a wonderful thing to be a volunteer. I've been a Civitan for 26 years, and I'm a member of three different clubs, and Civitan is an important part of my life. I learned how to make do public speaking. Um, I learned to step out where I wasn't sure that I had the skills. It was really very important to my career because I got leadership skills at Civitan in a fairly non-threatening environment, and then I got to use them on my job. It's done a tremendous growth for me. I used to be a very shy person and didn't talk to anybody. And, uh, and like I say, I've learned a lot through Civitan on a personal basis. I don't have the expectation of failure when I'm working with someone who's disabled. I expect them to be able to do whatever it is they want to do. I know what it has done for my life. It has made me more sufficient in what I do. It has been great as something that I will continue to do as long as I live. And at 93, you know, I'm still going strong and hopefully I'll continue to help others through the volunteer programs that we have. When I found Civitan and I was able to participate in serving people with disabilities, it just sort of opened my eyes and it gave me a feeling in my heart that there is nothing that compares with. I think one of the outstanding things about Civitan is the common interest, the idea of service to others above and beyond yourself. The members will look for needs that are unmet in the community. And if Civitan isn't, um, a, isn't able to meet the needs, then we're very good at uncovering different resources that can meet those needs. If you have a child or a relative that has a developmental or intellectual disability, Civitan is a service club that really can relate to what you're dealing with. They have many different areas of help. These jackets were a memorabilia type of thing. Years ago, at every convention or every meeting that we had for the district or international, they would give out little badges, memorabilia things, and we would trade back and forth to all the districts. Tom made it his life work to support and help those people and to educate us. In general, other than down south, Civitan is not known by the vast majority of people. 
uh, but we need to raise awareness among the people about Civitan exists and what, what, what we do. And when I met my husband, I told him that I would not marry him if he didn't join Civitan. So he joined Civitan the year afterwards, and we got married the year after that. <laughs> so. It really is grand to be a Civitan. 